What's up, fisher people? I'm making some spinner eggs to pull at Lake Sakakawea, or Sakakawea, however you pronounce it, this summer, uh, up in North Dakota on the Missouri River. And I uh, figured I might as well show you how to make them. So, first of all, a spinner egg is gonna be a big chunk of line, some hooks and a spinner on the back, pulled behind a bottom mouth or some other kind of weight. Super, super classic for summer walleye fishing. Um, everybody who's a walleye fisherman should know how to make a spinner egg. Matter of fact, my brother and I like to joke about the fact that uh, dad used to kind of have that as like a rite of passage for us. If you want to go fishing out in the big Missouri River, you got to know how to tie spinner rigs first and finish swimming lessons. And then when he said that, that made me pretty nervous. But, um, so first of all, what I'm using for line, I, Dad taught me about everything I know about how to do this except for the line that I'm using right now. I'm using fluorocarbon line, which I've heard is a lot more abrasion resistant, so less likely to be broken off on a tooth or if you rub across a rock or a tree limb or something like that. So I'm testing that out this year to see if they're a little tougher. But otherwise, I'm using typically size two hooks. I like the size two, you probably get away with a four. The twos are probably better, but the important thing is the fact that, you can see this right here, a lot of hooks, or the typical hooks you're probably used to, you'll notice that the shank of the hook is straight, whereas with these they're a little bit bent at the top where the eyelet is, and that'll make sense later, but as you're pulling it through the water, it allows you to kind of set the hook straighter into the fish if it's at that angle. So. It helps to keep the hook parallel to the line. I'll show you what I mean. So the first thing you gotta do, first hook, put the line right through the back there, through the eyelet, hold on to that, wrap it around four, five, six times, somewhere, somewhere in there. And then, you're gonna grab this other end of the line and put it back through the opposite direction. And it's not really a knot per se, but it's just kind of this, it's almost like a noose in a way where it's just like, my dad actually used to call it Chinese handcuffs, where it would just kind of suck right up against the top of the eye when you pull it. And it gets a little bit loose when you let go, but once you pull it again, it's tight. So there's no knot there, which it, the more knots you have, the more weak points and break points you got in the line, so if you avoid making a knot where possible, it probably makes it a little less light, little less likely to break off. So if you're making a minnow rig, if you want to fish with minnows, you're done right now. But in the summer, typically you're going to be using night crawlers, so we're going to add a second hook on there, so you got a couple of hooks about this far apart, called a night crawler harness. So you got kind of a back stinger hook, and night crawlers are pretty long, so it gives you another, another hook point for the, the bait. So this time, instead of going in this way, we're gonna go in the hook this way. So it's opposite of the way we did the first one to get it on in position and slide it down. So now you got the hook you tied right here and your new hook just kind of dangling there. And get them spaced three inches apart at the most, maybe two and a half. And then you're gonna do the same thing where you wrap it around one, two, three, four, four, five, and then pull it back the other way through the eye again. So now you got a set of hooks there. If you can see that. I don't know how good the light quality is here, but the nose of the night crawler would go here, this way, halfway through the body, and the tail would hang off down here. You got some tail room to move around the water. So now we're gonna throw some beads on there. And if you like to play with colors of beads, that's great. The most important reason you really need the beads is just to keep some separation between the hooks and the spinner blade so that the spinner blade can spin. So we're just sliding these beads on here. You can get these beads at any tackle shop, obviously, where you find hooks typically, and they come in a bazillion different colors. You can get them like solid colors. You can get like sparkly holographic ones, all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm just putting on red and green right now, a couple of classic colors. And then, once you got 
three to five beads on there. I'm doing four right now. You get this little thing that's called a quick change clevis that you can use. Um, this little plasticky chunk right here. And you'd snip a little spinner blade right in there. So this slides on the line as well. And make sure the, the clip part's towards the top. And as that slides down, then you'd be able to snap whatever your spinner of choice, size, color, all that kind of stuff is. And typically we'll just keep the spinners off so it's not so bulky on the tackle buddy here. Tackle buddy. And put the spinner on whenever you put the rig behind your, uh, behind your bottom bouncer and start fishing. Um, so now to tie this loop, so this is the loop that's gonna go to the uh, the snap swivel on your bottom bouncer, which I don't have a bottom bouncer sitting here with me, but you're just gonna have to take my word for it. So you do a loop like that, you kind of double up the line, and then you're gonna put that line through the loop you made. So you're pulling like a double, the double end, if you will, and then just pull it tight. And it'll look something like that. And then you're going to do the exact same thing one more time just to kind of double up that knot and make it a little more, a little firmer. Which sounds contradictory to what I said before about more knots makes for more breakpoints. But since we're doubling up the knot over top of itself, it actually reinforces that. So that's a little different. So now that is where you'd hook it on the back of your bottom bouncer and pull it through the water like this. Didn't mean to flip you off there accidentally. And that's also how you can wrap it onto this little tackle buddy thing here. So you can buy these rigs, of course, in the stores, pre-made, but I don't know, it's kind of a fun little pre-fishing ritual to sit around and make rigs with people. It's kind of nostalgic, it kind of reminds me of hanging out with my dad before trips that we would take, which fishing memories just aren't fishing memories if they don't involve my father typically, just kind of the way it goes. They're one and the same in my mind a lot of times. So, yeah, it gives you a chance to customize these things as well, though. You can pick the line that you want to use. You can make the length of the line you want to use. If fish are a little more finicky, sometimes you want to use a longer leader to get away from the bottom bouncer. If you want to get it higher up in the water, you can get more of a leader so that it floats up higher behind the bottom bouncer. The spinner, actually, the more it spins, the more it pulls the bait up in the water column. So depending on how close you want to get to the bottom, you can kind of control that. So that's how you tie a rig. If you're going to fish for walleyes in the summer, you're going to need some of those, especially if you come up to Lake Sakakawea or Sakakawea, however you prefer to pronounce it. Um, it's a great time to go fishing up there. It's been really good the last few years. It's uh, a great way to spend some time with your family and, uh, you know, sort of form some memories that you'll have for a long time. And you never know, it might become a tradition. And if it does, well, I'd be glad to be part of that and hopefully we can take every year. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.